shot to do this one. <coughs> go down there and do a. I don't think I'll worry about a panel. Go down there and just do a wide angle shot. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Swallow to fly. It's good for your fitness, though. It's. Uh, You'd never have thought taking photographs was yeah. good for the heart rate, but it is. when you're carrying all this gear, it certainly gets you puffing. We're not even at the car park yet, Brett. No, I'm bugging. <laughs> bugging yeah. 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 That's the saddle. That's where those photos were that I showed you. Oh, yeah. This is the saddle here. Right. What they call the saddle. Clamber up there or the track. Just this little bit of elevation here, but it's making a, a difference already. Yeah. If we're looking down here, eh? Yeah. Pretty cool. It's nice colours in the bush, though, eh? Yeah, we'll get Vicky there, we'll probably just get out of there. This is actually the why I do photography. Because if I didn't have the camera gear, there's no danger I'd be up here. Hey. <laughs> it's pretty cool. See right there? Yeah. So I thought that I was done <laughs> from the South Island. I thought I'd finished my last vlog this morning from uh, Lake Moki, um, but I'm here with Brett Wood, and Brett's a professional photographer from, uh, well, he's based in, in Wanaka, but uh, originally from Australia. <laughs> Australia, mate. And uh, we caught up actually the other day, we caught up by text and by, uh, by message um, a couple of weeks ago before I was coming down and where did we chat in Wanaka uh, the other day and it was quite remarkable how I think you and I see photography the same way. Just around the, the forming relationships with the landscape, having some shooting discipline, sometimes the best shot you do take is the one that you don't take. Yep, yep. It's, it's quite remarkable, it's quite refreshing because I thought, I thought it was just me. Mm. I thought it was just me. So, um, Brett has gone and dragged me halfway up a mountain. Um, where are we? Skipper's Saddle. Skipper's Saddle, high above Queenstown, and I think yep. we're about 1,500. We're only guessing, but we're not far from Coronac Peak Ski Field, which is probably only a couple of hundred metres higher yeah. than what we are. So, I'm thinking maybe around that 13 to 1,400 metres, but we'll have to check that. Yeah, so yeah. it's quite a climb to get up here. It's like a goat track. <laughs> To get down to civilization. So, what we're going to do is, um, I'll reveal the landscape just in the background in a little minute, but um, we've got some simply beautiful mountains in the background. And this is a, a location that Brett knows very well, so he's taken me up here to show me this. I haven't seen this before, not in the flesh, you know, I've seen it online. But um, we're going to wait just for the, the sun, not that we're going to get a sunset tonight, I don't think, but uh, we're going to wait for the sun just to get a little bit uh, further down towards the west and uh, hopefully try and catch this scene before the blue haze hits the shadows. And uh, I'll probably end up doing another pano, as I always do. And I'll maybe try and punch in a little bit closer in. There's a real gnarly road that runs up the valley. And it's a hell of a road looking at it, and Brett assures me it's a hell of a road. So yep. we'll, go and, uh, we'll go and get set up, eh? We'll get stuck into it. Uh, yeah, will we? Oh, we're going to get stuck in it. Yeah. Sitting on a rock. What I might do is I'm maybe going to hunker down here in amongst the grasses with the saddle rock up here on the left. There's a road meanders down the valley 
and I'll dirty the lens with this stuff and punch through it. And we've got these real gnarly mountains, almost mountains that look like crushed paper. And the snow covered mountains in the background and a fairly grey, uneventful sky. So I think what I'll, what I'll, because I'll take this right through to the, there's quite a dramatic 45 degree peak here on the right hand side that's much closer so the grasses are much bigger and more vivid than they are in the far distance and that will give us some sense of scale here. That's what I'll do. I'll go and grab the camera. You do, yeah, it just breaks it up. Probably gives it a sense of scale, but Don't need a filter. I will use the polarizer though because it might help me cut through. I don't have a UV, but at elevation, a UV is good for cutting out that blue haze. Okay. Particularly at elevation, I don't know why. I don't know how it works, but. Um... It's not as well. You're talking about shooting that way? Well, I don't know. I just like <laughs> the look of the rock. I've got some lights. Yeah, well, the light's coming in from yeah. over here, eh? So. Yeah. So, I don't know, I'll get the camera now, but it could maybe be a vertical shot there somewhere. Um, there is quite a good leading line, though, eh, down this worn path. It's a wee yeah. bit messy, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's... Because that kick to the left there leads you into the road. You've kind of got a... I mean, you've got to just that gnarly rock. It's quite dominant in the foreground. Yeah, shoot wide angle. I don't think I'll worry about a panner. Go down there and just do a wide angle shot. One, two, three on the road, four at the back. Yeah. Yeah. It's something you probably need to do with medium format stuff, but I generally try not to. I'm shooting in the far distance anyway. Yeah. Well, it depends. Like, it, if that rock over there was the first thing in the foreground, yeah. you'd probably get away without it because that. Is actually oh, yeah, yeah. quite close. You could actually just take a single frame and let it get a bit blurry at the back. Not going to make an awful lot of difference today, eh? How does it look? I'm probably actually going to focus stack it because I want to get this spear grass right in the foreground here. And then I've got the road and then the mountains at the back. So it's actually, it's not too bad. It's kind of bad. I think this might be it here for me, Brett. I've got uh, quite a nice little t tussock of grass that's hiding the join of the road yeah. so that the road seems to come out of nowhere as well as this rock in the... but it doesn't dramatise this big rock down the end here. But again, <laughs> again the light's not good. That's what we've got to work with though, because that's that, that rock, rock there that kicks off to the left. So. It's this 45 degree line here yep. that runs up, I can't really see it in this long that one there. That's kind of going to be in the left extreme of mine. It'll probably be, mm. it's hard to visualize panels though. Mm. I think I might even, I don't know, I'll just think about it. I wonder if I might even just put on my zoom lens and just take some pieces. Just the points right in? Yeah, yeah. The 100 to 400 lens and just take some pieces out. Oh, yeah. That's kind of a, a polarizer. road here is one of the hero pieces.
I'm actually just going to take this one here, Brett. I know the light's not right, but it's never going to get right. Oh, well, I will actually get worse, not better. <laughs> James are free though, eh? I reckon we could do with some more equipment here, Brett. With, I'm looking at looking at you going with three cameras here. What's going on? We haven't got enough. You can never have too much gear, eh? We need more. <laughs> we need a new Canon R5. So I've ended up here with about a quarter of a second at f14. And it's quite nice and moody and dark, the way I'm shooting it, to maintain the highlights in the snow because I don't want them to clip. And if I make this all dark, I'll be able to selectively lift some of the detail that I want to highlight out of the foreground. But there's a big gnarly rock down there that we were standing on before and it, you can't, I don't even think I can see it, but I don't think you need it because I think the road here is one of the hero pieces. And we can spend some time putting radials and brushes through that to make sure that that does become a feature. So I'm going to take this, two second timer, quarter of a second. It might work actually. And although I'm shooting portrait, it's still 25% uh, overlap, 50%, sorry. The second one. Third one. I used to nearly break my neck trying to find these other ones, but I'm going to use the rotating screen this time, which makes it much easier. And 50% again. And with a panel, you always go more then you want to shoot, that's actually a really nice colour in the hills. I don't think I'm yet at the hill, it's close. That's five, I think. And I'm picking up the snow up here, which is a nicer light. And just picking this up, there's actually some gentle light falling on these peaks and these highlights up here, so that's quite interesting actually. I couldn't see that with the naked eye, but the camera's picked that up. So I've taken one and per previous videos, if I've taken one and the light's not changed, I don't actually see much point in taking another one, unless I'm gonna frame up completely differently. It's a gnarly road. Do you want to just come in? We'll sign off together, Brett. Ah! What are you recording that? <laughs> Besties. <laughs> 
So that's us, uh, that's us going to have a wrap now from uh, this location here today and I'm almost tempted to say that uh, it wasn't good light and it was a, it was a disappointment but uh, as Brett's just done on his sign off, there's no such thing as, uh, as, as a bad photo shoot because um, it's the being here that's the important part and seeing something new is simply incredible so thanks to Brett for bringing me up here and I, I think I might steal a catchphrase that Brett's just used and when in his wrap up he's talked about we don't need good photographs because we take photographs with our eyes and that's true that eh? It is man. That's yeah. true so yep. that's yep. pretty cool and you might find that popping up in this channel from time <laughs> to time. So uh, just before we go make sure you check out Brett's stuff I'll put links below and uh, Check out his Instagram, because his Instagram stuff is really nice. Um, his stuff right across social media is incredible. And check out his YouTube videos as well. Well worth a look. And another now local New Zealand based photographer. So until next time you keep shooting, you have fun. Get up a hill. Take care. For goodness sake, take care. And we will see you next time. Until then, cheerio. See ya. Thanks for watching everyone, wherever you are.